Bonjour à tous. Je vais essayer de traduire les phrases les plus importantes en français. Donc, euh, comme Elisabeth a dit, euh, j'étais donc au musée de Tervurne avant ma retraite. Et là, il y a beaucoup de spécimens du Katanga. So there were many bird specimens, there are still many bird specimens in the museum when I retired. But I thought it would be interesting to show you why I consider this a hotspot. You can see on the screen the chewbill, which is a bird which has a restricted distribution in Africa, but it does occur in Katanga. It is not an endemic, but lower down, you see one of the marsh weavers, which is effectively an endemic for Katanga. So let's give you the outline of my talk today. I will try to convince you that Katanga is indeed a hotspot. I will briefly speak about ornithological history and zoogeography. And of course, I will refer to my own studies. You will see on the slides two different ways of studying the birds of Katanga. In the old days, it was collecting. And you see a slide, well, a photo of the collectors of Alexander Prigozhin, one of the famous collectors. His specimens are all in Belgium, for instance, in Tervuren, some of them are in Brussels. And lower down, you see the more modern way of um, exploring Katanga, where I am in the picture when I was much younger. Donc, tout ça pour vous dire que l'exploration ornithologique du Katanga a débuté il y a déjà longtemps. Mais maintenant, avec les moyens plus sophistiqués, nous arrivons à des nouveaux résultats. On the screen, you will notice that, of course, Congo being in the central part of Africa, it has the highest bird count for any African country. You see the numbers there. But on the other hand, much of this remains not well known. Vous voyez les nombres d'oiseaux connus du pays et aussi le, comment dire, qu'il y, qu y en a qui sont des migrateurs du Paléarctique, d'autres migrateurs, mais la plupart sont évidemment des espèces résidentes et certaines sont endémiques. On va entrer dans le détail tout de suite. Why is this a hotspot? It was not... Um, discovered by me because scientific studies already showed it that in this central part of Africa here there are many species of birds that's why you can call it a hotspot donc c'est une région où il y a très où il y a beaucoup d'espèces d'oiseaux ensemble sur cette partie de l'Afrique Évidemment, l'oiseau le, le plus important ou le plus connu, c'est le pan congolais. So the Congo peacock is the most well-known endemic bird from Congo, but it does not occur in Katanga because so much has been said about this bird, including in the book that I wrote a few months ago. I thought it wouldn't be a good idea to talk about this bird again today. But instead, we will divert to another region of Congo where it does not occur, but where there are other interesting birds, I'm sure. Again, this is the map, Congo, and then you see where Katanga is. So it's in the southern part of Congo. It's uh, bordering on Angola, Zambia, and also on Tanzania when you cross Lake Tanganyika. Here is a list of the important birds from Katanga. You see that there are four endemic species, most of them already long, described a long time ago, but that were not seen 
later. Although a friend of mine recently said that he saw and even photographed Estrelda Nigriloris, but I still have to uh, see the picture. Estrelda Nigliror Nigliloris is the um, black-faced waxbill, so it's a very small bird. C'est la strilt à masque noir qui a été décrit par James Chapin uh, il y a déjà longtemps et qui aurait été revu cette année-ci. Alors les autres oiseaux, on va en discuter plus tard. The three other species I will talk about later here. Not only are there endemic birds in Katanga, but because of the geographical region, there are important non-endemic birds also occurring, for instance, in the montane area of the Albertine Rift. And some of them were described in the old days by Prigogine, like Mount Kabobo, and the Marungo Mountains, again by Prigogine with co-author Dowsett. And uh, not only mountains, etc., are important, but there are also uh, lakes and lakeside vegetation. And Hubert Lyons, who traveled through Katanga in 1931 for his famous study of the cysticulas, discovered also a regional endemic, but it's not only occurring in Katanga, it occurs also in neighboring Zambia. Donc cette espèce-ci, la cysticole des marais, a été décrite par euh, Lines, qui a traversé le Katanga il y a très longtemps, en 1931. Katanga is also well was well studied in the old days already for migrants. Can I remind you of the situation in 1962 Barn swallows had been ringed already some years before that date and were found in the Palearctic. You can see on the table in the countries. So we're talking now about um, more than 60 years ago. Most of Africa in those days didn't he even have a ringing scheme, but Katanga did have one. Donc voici la liste des uh, hirondelle rustique qui avait été baguée avant 1962 et qui ont été euh, trouvées en Eurasie après cette date, évidemment. Ce sont les, déjà des résultats très anciens de l'œuvre de bagage. Also interesting was the study by Verheyen who found that the redback shrike that he discovered during his visit in Katanga, uh, took another route from the spring migration versus the autumn migration. This was published a long time ago, 1951, which is 72 years ago. So simply to show you that the study of birds in Katanga has already a long history. Comme vous voyez sur cette image, le La migration de la pigrièche, du pigrièche écorcheur a été étudiée par Verheyen déjà très longtemps. Il, il a trouvé que les routes prises en automne et, en, et au printemps étaient différentes. Now it's about time to show you the vegetation map of uh, Congo and particularly of Katanga you will see that there are uh, important vegetations that we will discuss now. For instance, here you have the, um, how you call it? It's the savanna woodland. Savanna woodland is important. And then you will find that there are some lakes that are covered by partly by reeds, whereas the other lakes like Muero and Tanganyika are very deep and in fact, uninteresting for birds. Vous voyez sur la carte de végétation, surtout cette région-ci en olive, 
c'est la végétation donc on appelle miombo ou la savane arborée qu'on va discuter un petit peu et puis les lacs qui se trouvent ici comme le lac Upemba qui est aussi le, le nom d'un parc régional et là il y a surtout la végétation des rivages des lacs qui est important pour les oiseaux So let's talk about Miombo. You have some uh, pictures here. Most of the time there are trees, but sometimes you have areas where no trees occur, but they are much wetter. All this is a region of Katanga that originally covered almost one third or even more of the province. It, doesn't, it does occur also in neighboring countries. But what happens nowadays, here you have another view from the sky. So it's, it looks like a, a dense forest, but as you saw on the previous image, there is much grass hidden below the trees. But in recent times, this Miombo forest is disappearing because of the people of Lubumbasha, Lubumbashi, the capital of Katanga, of course need uh, wood, for their own uh, households. And you see the situation over the years has changed drastically. So only in the old days, dark green was all Miombo forest, but nowadays this, it remains only, let's say less than one half of what it used to be. Of course, these population needs the wood and charcoal and it is very urgent to find other means for their cooking and other needs otherwise this vegetation will disappear nowadays it's already gone say from distances about 100 kilometers from Lubumbashi because people are um, making charcoal that far away and bring it to the city donc uh, Mutea et ces co-auteurs ont démontré que la végétation de la savane arborée, donc surtout les arbres, disparaît euh, très rapidement et que c'est grand temps de changer cette euh, nécessité d'avoir du, du charbon de bois et qu'il faudrait à tout prix remplacer ça par d'autres moyens. On parle peut-être de miroirs, etc., mais c'est encore dans la phase expérimentale. Here you have... A, a bird that is completely endemic to this Miombo uh, area, not only Katanga, but also Zambia, etc. So that's one of the most uh, interesting flycatchers. It's the Booms flycatcher. And of course, one of the birds that was discovered uh, almost uh, 50 years ago is the Lippens thrush, but we are not sure that it really belongs to. Uh, um, Miombo, because after the holotype, which is in the museum, no other bird was ever seen for certain. Donc, cette grive, on n'est pas encore sûr qu'elle appartient vraiment à la faune spécialisée du Miombo. Now, as I showed on one of the previous slides, the Miombo vegetation is especially here, but it's also interesting to have a look at altitude. Mount Kabobo is there and Mount Smorungu are here. So these have montane vegetation and specialized birds. Although here in this area, it's also above 1,800 meters, there's no really montane vegetation and probably there are no endemic montane birds hidden there, but there are some on these two areas next to the Lake Tanganyika. Donc, en, en altitude, vous avez une flore de montagne avec des oiseaux spécialisés qui y habitent. Voilà l'aspect de cette végétation. Here you see uh, photographs in the region of Mount Kabobo. And this is one map that I made a long time ago to show how some of the endemic birds of the Albertine Rift are distributed in this general area. You will see Lake Tanganyika here. The border of Katanga is about here. So this Albertine bird, in fact, enters Katanga 
And this is another subspecies than the ones that live to the north. So if you make the count of endemic birds for Katanga, you have to include this one simply based on a single area where it lives. Donc cet oiseau appartient à la faune du rift albertain et il n'y a qu'un seul endroit, mais avec une sous-espèce spéciale située dans la province du Katanga. Here you have a, a view from the sky from Lake Upemba that I showed already a few times. So you can see that it's not like Lake Sanganika and Muero. It's not a deep lake. It's a, a lake where there is a reed vegetation covering almost half of the area. So this is very interesting for birds and especially for the marsh weavers. The marsh weavers, um, in fact, I will show the other slide first. There are four species. Aichardi is occurring outside Katanga, so it's uh, one of a group of four. But the three others are living within Katanga, but only in very restricted areas. One, Lake Upemba, so that's the Upemba here. The Rueti, only in this area along the Lufira River. And Katanga, which has a more larger distribution in this, this general area, because the border with Zambia is also here. It does occur in Zambia, but Riveti and Upembe are strictly endemic to Katanga. Again, you see that uh, these birds were described a long time ago, and I have particular interest in Plosi Riveti, where there was only one specimen in the museum that I described uh, almost uh, 17 years after it was discovered by Rue in 1982. And then I was able to go to Katanga myself in 2009 with Michel Hasson. By the way, Michel Hasson is the man who made most, most of the photos that I'm showing you. And we rediscovered it not only at the type locality at the Lufira Dam, but also along the river about 50 kilometers to the north. So these birds really give the information for what I call the hotspot Katanga. Voilà donc les, les photos des tisserins de marais endémiques du Katanga ou de la région générale autour du Katanga. Et vous voyez leur carte de distribution. Je m'excuse, c'est une carte qui a été faite il y a presque 50 ans et on n'a jamais pensé à faire une nouvelle, comment dire, plus moderne. In 2011, I made this uh, list of species that occur in Katanga and we published, together with Michel Lasson, the photographer, we published uh, let's say, a general discussion of about one third of all the species, simply because we had rather interesting information and good photographs of those 248. Cette publication existe aussi en français, elle s'appelle Oiseau du Katanga, et les photos sont de mon ami Michel Lasson. Nous avons réussi à trouver des informations intéressantes pour à peu près un tiers du nombre d'espèces qui habite le Katanga. Il n'y a pas seulement des questions résolues en ce qui concerne les, les oiseaux endémiques du Katanga, il y a aussi des, en score des difficultés qui doivent être résolues. So there are some cases of taxonomic uh, problems and I'm showing you for example this one about the white-throated Franklin. This bird is rather well known from, let's say, uh, Cameroon and, and adjoining areas, but there are very few populations, some of them in Zambia and Angola, but also some in Katanga. And the museum specimens for this at the moment don't even permit a distinction between these southern populations. But they, of course, they live in a habitat that is quite different from the Cameroon one. So if ecology would be an important factor, then certainly we would this, uh, describe them as something really different from the northern ones. 
And another publication we made, Masson, Masson and myself, was about this uh, um, spiky lark. In French, it's Lalouette Eperonne. See, it was known from a large area in Southern Africa, from Angola going all the way south to this part of the Cape province. And also, interestingly, from a northern area in Tanzania. And then um, about uh, six, seven years ago, we found, well, Michel Lasson made some photographs in Katanga here and showed them to me. And we so could prove that there was a, a population intermediate between the two that were already well known. And at one moment, this one in Tanzania was considered as an other species, but because of this intervening population, I'm now convinced that all this belongs to one species, Kersomanos albofasciata. Donc la louette éperonnée qui était bien connue de la région de l'Afrique du Sud, mais aussi une population considérée un peu différente du nord de la Tanzanie, nous avons réussi à photographier des oiseaux similaires au Katanga et ça nous pense à penser, enfin ça, ça nous fait penser que en fait tout ça, toutes ces populations euh, s'appliquent à une seule espèce, euh, Hersomanes albofasciata. Donc tout ça, c'était le passé. Maintenant, parlons du futur. In the, well, we have to consider now the new possibilities for study of birds of Katanga. In the museum, we paid much attention of making uh, public the information on the collections, as you see on the right-hand side. And many students were able to visit the museum including people from Congo, and they made their thesis and further studies on birds in the museum. Of course, this is not the whole story. One has to go in the field to study birds. And we had some uh, training camps in uh, the area of Lubumbashi, where we taught uh, techniques to study birds, as you all well know. These are uh, mist nets in operation in the area of Lubumbashi. Donc, nous avons euh, au musée de Tervuren invité des étudiants euh, du Congo pour faire des études sur les oiseaux de leur propre pays, mais nous avons aussi fait des camps euh, dans la région de Lubumbashi pour. Euh, montrer à ses étudiants comment on peut étudier les oiseaux dans la nature. So I'm coming already to the end of my talk. Um, in Katanga, there are two things going on. The parks, it's very difficult to guard them because um, the number of people guards are rather insufficient and poaching and burning and etc are going on unfortunately but the um institute the, the park du congo donc the national park system has ambitious plans of making uh, more reserves than only the one in upemba and they are trying to get some um, um parks established in this general area of Kabobo, you will remember that I showed you the bird that was endemic to the Albertine Rift and that does occur here. It would be good if another park would be created in this general area. Uh, donc, le, les parcs naturels existent au Katanga, mais il est difficile de les garder. Le nombre de gardes n'est pas suffisant. Par contre, l'Institut des parcs nationaux du Congo a quand même l'intention de créer même d'autres parcs et un de ceux-ci sera très intéressant puisque ce sera justement la région du Mont Kabobo près du lac Tanganyika 
où il y a donc euh, pas mal d'oiseaux endémiques, notamment l'oiseau, le, le Turaco, que je vous ai montré. So, this is the end of my talk. I would like to thank all people, especially Ms. Michel Arton for the photographs and all the students at Lubumbashi, and especially also the staff at the museum that is continuing the job now to be available specimens and information. Thank you.